What's going on? Uh, this is Pat again. Uh, about a year ago, I made a video um, titled My Guitar Collection of 2022. And I think I put it as private for some reason. I'm going to unlist that on private so you could still see that. But it is now February 2023, and I figured it was time for an update. Now, my collection's changed just a little bit since I made that video. Um, so there's going to be some familiar faces, and then there's going to be some new guitars in there. But I figured, hey, what the heck? Let's go ahead and get started. So the first one we're going to look at, and by the way, I should mention this is guitars and basses, uh, is actually a familiar face. It just got cleaned up and a new set of strings here last week. And that is my Epiphone Acoustic. Now, this was the first guitar that kicked off my collection. It's a DR100 Acoustic. Matter of fact, the only acoustic I own now so kind of hint hint there but still will never get rid of this guitar love it um, I think it's in tune yeah DR100 acoustic um, like I said I just cleaned it up uh, put new strings on it I changed the bridge pins out on it yeah, I mean, nothing too much to be said. Um, this probably needs a fret polish too, but I'll worry about that at a later date. Now the next one, I can't remember if I featured in my last video. I probably should have watched it, you know, all the way through, but uh, this is actually gonna be the first bass we'll feature today. That is gonna be my Davison, Davis, Davison? Yeah, Davison bass. Uh, this was my first bass. Uh, I had, my friend cut out the sticker and put that on there for me. Um, in this hour is a little music project I've been working on on and off for the last year. Gotta be honest, probably, probably not my favorite guitar in my collection. This is just a cheap bass. Um, I think you can probably find these on Amazon for something in the neighborhood of maybe like a hundred bucks or 120 with an amp. Like, you know, crazy cheap, but it was my first bass, so, I mean, it, it got by, you know, it got me by for a while there. Um, the action, especially around the 12th, I don't know if you could see that, um, is about a mile high. It needs a neck shim, but it's one of those, I'll probably hold on to it just because, again, it's my first bass, kind of like my DR100 acoustic, but um, very neck divey, you know, again, just a pretty cheap bass. Uh, it actually matches the accent wall behind me or to the side of me and kind of that color there if you can kind of tell. But uh, yeah, that's the second one. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, I haven't tuned this in a while, so I don't know if it's in tune or not, but. Uh, yeah, Davidson bass, that's uh, guitar number two. Probably a familiar face, but I honestly can't remember. I also just realized I'm wearing the same shirt I wore in last year's video. A uh, different hat though. So guitar number three is actually one of the newer ones in my collection. And again, it's a bass. I only own two basses right now. So I figured we'd just go ahead and get those knocked out. Um, that is my, what is this, 40th anniversary? Yeah, for 40th anniversary Squire Precision Bass. Um, this is the one that came with the anodized gold pick guard. I'm just not huge on gold, so I bought a black guard and swapped it out. I uh, kept the gold accents on it. Uh, so gold um, pickup jack, uh, gold knobs, gold saddle. Uh, all the screws are gold. The hardware at the top is still gold. Uh, this one I actually just did a um, I filmed the video, I haven't edited it yet, but I just replaced the strings. Uh, I still had the stock strings on it, so I just replaced those. Um, you know, cleaned the fretboard a little bit. Didn't really need it quite yet, but it was a little dry, so I went ahead and oiled it. But as far as basses go, I absolutely love this one. Uh, it plays great. I love the block inlays in it. The action on this one is not a mile high compared to the other one. I mean, again, just a few chords on it, and we'll move on to the rest of the guitars here. And yes, I cheat, I play bass with a pick. Moving on, I think we're gonna see another familiar face here next. So I can't remember if I had this one in last year's video. Another really cool one, uh, probably one of my favorite guitars to play, my Billy Joe Armstrong Les Paul Jr. Um, I think this is, it's hard to see the serial. It's a 21, I think. Yeah, this is a 2021 model. When I got this, the Knobs were gold because I bought it on Guitar Center used for like 300 bucks. I actually had one pre-ordered on Sweetwater for, you know, the full price. So I didn't get like the fancy case with this one. 
It is the set neck version, not the bolt-on. My guitars, they live here. Um, I don't really take them out, and if I do, um, it's either to trade them or sell them. Les Pauls have always been some of my favorite guitars. This one also uh, recently just got a restring, a new setup. Uh, so that's my Billy Joe Armstrong Les Paul Jr. I think my favorite thing about this guitar is honestly, um, you know, just the look of it, just the white on black. I always love that Stormtrooper look. If you can see the Stormtrooper helmet in the back there. And this isn't the only white on black guitar I own. So another little uh, little teaser for you there. But, um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and look at another familiar face. So the next guitar to show off here, um, that is my Dot Studio Epiphone. This one also, uh, I try to clean and maintain my guitars. Um, I'll try to wipe them down every so often, but I do try to polish them, restring them, clean them up at least twice a year. Uh, but this one, uh, still near and dear, um, still plays great. I mean, it just, it does what you want it to do. Um, the thing I love about this one is I'm a very large human being. I'm very willing to admit that. Some of my guitars can kind of look like a toothpick on me. Um, and I actually think Tom DeLong said this too. That's why he gravitated toward these large hollow bodies like this one. You know, this is the ES-335 style. And that's kind of what brought me to them too. They just, they don't look like toothpicks on me. I haven't really done much to this one. Uh, the only addition I have made to it is it has Schaller strap locks on it. This is a 2012 model. Uh, so not quite the oldest guitar in my collection, but kind of close to it. From here on out, it's all new faces. Uh, all these guitars I have gotten in the last year and have their own unique story. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to those. So this next one, it may look a little familiar, but it's not the same one I had a year ago. Um, actually, funny enough, the part of the video I made a year ago that I did watch, I said the only time I get rid of this guitar is if I got a Fender version. And that's exactly what happened. So here is my 2021 Player Telecaster uh, and Butterscotch Blonde. You can see this thing really shines right now. Um, I just finished making the YouTube short for this. So it's got a brand new set of strings on it. It just got cleaned. I uh, just got the fresh, po you know, the frets polished. Kind of the story behind how I acquired this one. So the um, last video I made about my collection, um, I had mentioned I had a gold top Les Paul that I traded for a Martin acoustic that I love the neck on. To kind of make a long story short, I didn't use the Martin as much as I thought I would. It honestly kind of sat and, um, you know, that was one of those decisions where I was like, hey, I can let this sit or I can kind of test the waters out there, see if maybe I can sell it or get a decent trade for it and move on to, you know, something new. Posted it on Marketplace. I like to do a lot of business there, but I got a few hits for it. Um, one guy tried to offer me like this, like super modified Samick Les Paul style guitar. And I was like, no, that's not worth it. And then the guy who had this guitar prior to me, he shot me a message, said, hey, I'm a touring musician. I need a new acoustic for the road. Would you be down to trade that Martin acoustic for, you know, this player telly I got from this guy? Um, I had him send me some pictures because that was a, kind of an up trade. That Martin acoustic was about a $600 guitar and this is retails at eight fifty. dollars for me, I wanted to make sure like, hey, what I was getting was in good shape because I knew what he was getting uh, was in good shape. Um, so he sent me pictures over and eventually we met, we talked a little bit and made the trade happen. This is um, going to be a staple in my collection. I don't ever see myself getting rid of this. Um, this is probably the nicest guitar in my collection. And one of the coolest parts is, I don't know if you can see right there, it has the Fender 75 stamp on it. Um, I thought that was really cool. You know, I guess that leads to my last two here. So this next one um, also has kind of a story behind it. Uh, it is the oldest guitar in my collection. The story behind how I got this one, um, when I got that Telecaster I just showed you, um, I was I now had two Telecasters. I had the Squire, uh, but I decided like, hey, I don't need two of the same guitar. You know, I could probably move this on and just trade it for something of like condition um, and something that you know I don't have in my collection. And that's how I got this one. Uh, this is my 98 Squire Strat. I think the coolest thing about this guitar is that it has the see-through finish. Um, it's not just like your standard, you know, full gloss finish. You can actually see the wood grain below it. And that's something that kind of drew me to it. Uh, but again, another one I got through Marketplace. Um, I don't have the back plate on it. It didn't come with it. The only things I've done to this guitar since getting it, other than restringing it, was I put a 
you know, a tremolo bar on it. Uh, this is the only guitar I have with a trim system, which is pretty cool. I actually was gravitating toward this one a lot over the Telecaster for a minute there. Uh, but yeah, this is what I got in exchange for my Squire Telecaster. Definitely not perfect shape. Um, I doubt it's in tune. I haven't played it in a little bit. But this is one that is coming up for a restring and a cleanup, so you'll probably see this in a short, uh, not too long from now. I think the only couple things that I had to do to it, other than new strings when I got it, was the bottom strap button was loose, so I did the old toothpick trick to fix that. The guy who had it before me also put fender tuners on it, uh, which is great, but some of them, you know, I can't maybe you can see some of them are kind of recessed. Um, I don't know if he necessarily got the right size and he didn't have the old set anymore. Uh, so it was kind of a pain in the butt to restring. So I'm kind of like, uh, but finally, uh, the last guitar we'll look at is actually my newest guitar. I've had it for about two months now and um, really happy with it. So let's go ahead and move on to that last one. But again, something I would probably say will be a staple in my collection unless I get a Fender version. Uh, so last but not least here, this is my 2021 Epiphone SG Muse. A lot of research went into purchasing this guitar. I had looked at it and looked at it and looked at it because I knew I wanted to get an SG, but I didn't know which one I wanted to get. And ultimately I landed on this one for a few reasons. A couple things I've done to this since getting it. Um, it came with clear knobs. Uh, all the Muses come with clear knobs. Went and got some Gibson Speed knobs to put on it and um, changed it to a black knob, which I think just looks great on this. It matches the other plastics really well. The other couple things I did to it also have the shawler strap locks on this one. Other thing that really drew me to this one was the push-pull pots. I don't have anything with push-pull on it, so I thought that would be a cool addition to the collection. I highly recommend it if you are in the market for an SG um, for the price point, the playability, the uh, I think it's the Almaco Pro, Pro Buckers in there. Uh, that is my whole guitar collection, you guys. So again, that pretty much wraps up my guitar collection video. I appreciate you guys tuning back in and checking that out. Um, kind of the future here, what I'm looking for, um, just to kind of share with you. So definitely want to get an Epiphone Les Paul Custom. If I do end up getting one this year, I will unbox it on here. Les Paul Custom's on the list. Definitely thinking about some PRS stuff. Um, I have looked into some, um, some PRS, uh, the new Yamaha Rev series. I'm really digging that. Uh, and there's just a few other ones out there. I'm, I'm a collector and a player. Um, I'm hoping I don't run out of room too soon here. Um, my guitar wall over here is full. My bass wall is almost full. Uh, but I have a whole empty wall over here uh, screaming for, for new toys. But anyways, you guys, I appreciate you checking out this video. Uh, throw me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and I will catch you guys on the next one. I'll see you later.